it wasn't just Abdullah Masood and few other who came back from Afghanistan into South Waziristan, seeking this new business opportunity post-American bombing, but also many from Wazir tribes like Malvi Nazir, Naik Muhammad and Hafiz Gul Bahadur. They all came back for the same motive and actually they were all competing among themselves for having maximum foreigners to host. Naik Muhammad Wazir was no one. He was never in a main job with Taliban. He was not even considered the second, third, fourth of Sefer Rahman Mansur, who was fighting the battle in Pakshia and a very well-reputed and senior Taliban leader. When Sefer Rahman Mansur and other Al-Qaeda people fled into North Waziristan, if Naik Muhammad was so high in rank, why would Sefer Rahman Mansur cross over into Kuram Agency and not into South Waziristan where Naik Muhammad was coming and it was his local area. So that tells us the story that Naik Muhammad was nowhere near the hierarchy of Taliban and even nowhere near the close aides of Sefer Aban Mansur. He was just a normal fighter. He was just on a normal job. And when the mercenary job ended, the masters fled the scene. He came back to South Waziristan, his village in Kalosha. Sefer Rahman Mansur lived like three to four years more than Naik Muhammad. And in all this time, he had no contact with Naik Muhammad whatsoever. Even when Naik Muhammad profile rose to another level, there was no contact between him and Sefer Rahman Mansur. So it was all fake stories which Naik Muhammad used to give once he rose to power that I've been so close with the Taliban, I've been so close with the Al-Qaeda leadership. He never met any one of them. It was Naik Muhammad's own ambition that he gathered Ahmad Zai Wazir tribesmen together and gave them an idea of hosting fellow Al-Qaeda fighters who were already inside Waziristan and create a kind of a business model in which they will host them and they will take money from them for providing them security and safety. Just like other smugglers in Waziristan and Fatah used to do. This is the time when Al-Qaeda foreigners crossed into Pakistan and we had pressure from all coalition partners and Americans specifically to do some operation against them and capture them. And as per Americans, there were high profile Al-Qaeda leaders who crossed in, but actually there was none. These were local Uzbek, Uyghurs and Abu Sayyaf fighters who were there in Sefer Rahman Mansur's Malaysia and now when Sefer Rahman Mansur Malaysia has dispersed, they crossed into Pakistan. And Naik Muhammad, because he was knowing them from before, he was also serving under the same Malaysia. He thought it's a great opportunity to host them. And now that I'm jobless, make out some money. Good idea. But what was actually a bad idea that, hello, Mr. Naik Muhammad, this was not your decision to take. And why would Pakistan want Al-Qaeda people, Al-Qaeda trained fighters to come into Pakistan and invite trouble into Pakistan for no reason. Come on, take your fellows, take your friends and go to their countries. Why don't you go to Uzbekistan? This was something which Naik Muhammad missed. And yes, we had a serious problem with him on that. So we geared up and went into Kalosha, which was few miles west from Vana. Naik Muhammad and his friends were surrounded there. We were in a very good position. But then we found out that the MMA government in KPK, which was an ideological ally of the spiral indigenous insurgencies and were feeding on the anti-American narrative. So they step in and say, hey, hey, wait, you need to call off the operation because we need to do negotiations with these militants. Army at that time was under General Pervez Musharraf and MMA was his ally. So MMA asked the operation to be halted immediately. We had no other options. We came back from the door. Believe me, if we had taken down Naik Muhammad that day and the other foreigners, you would never be hearing this word TTP. But anyways, this is how things happen. So we gave them a soft exit and they immediately took it. This was celebrated as a great victory by Naik Muhammad because Naik Muhammad was still in search of recognition but had no idea what to do. 
Naik Muhammad was also suffering from split personality syndrome and a massive anger issue. He was a crackhead to be honest. <laughs> I've seen him in two meetings. At times he would do things that he regretted later and had to apologize many times. He was like a baby who would break the game if he loses or even if you don't listen to him he will still break the game and say that I don't want to play and just moment later come back and say please can you play with me this was Naik Muhammad Naik Muhammad was so excited that when FC was moving back Naik Muhammad ambushed them and martyred many of our soldiers as they were not prepared and did not know what to do either to fight or not to fight Pakistan government's indecisiveness caused us the lives of these soldiers right after this incident operation kalosha 2 was launched and we made a list of 70 high value targets including naik mohammad wazir and haji sharif the second in command after couple of days naik mohammad realized that he stands no chance and he was smart enough to judge the resolve of pakistan army at that time and also that his objective was already achieved he pushed his apologist for a peace treaty okay so we were stopped again and mma pulled their head out again to pressure islamabad to get at this request the operation was stopped while naik mohammad was now attacking pro pakistani patriots maliks and tribals with the help of foreign fighters of tahir uzbek and hasan these dudes and their fighters were really professional and they were fighting for their own survival the maliks and tribals were no match to them both these fighters were paying naik mohammad for their refuge and protection and naik mohammad was on the moon using them against all his enemies and potential contenders naik mohammad has taken advance payment for many years which later he told pakistani government and army that he needs to pay these foreigners as he has taken so much money from them and would you believe Pakistan army paid this money to Naik Muhammad to be given back to the foreign fighters so they can go back to their countries and leave us alone Naik Muhammad did not pay a single dime to them also he never told them to leave this guy was very shrewd to his interest he was an example of a perfect con man in the first two days some targets in Shikai were also neutralized and Naik Muhammad was called to Shikai peace deal while telling him that yes we recognize his authority and will listen to his request but in return he has to listen to ours naik mohammad only request at that time was money he wanted money in simple and power and if you go through shikai agreement you will see that naik mohammad was given everything he was paid 1 crore rupees at that time when dollar was on 45 rupees 1 crore was upfront paid to Naik Muhammad I'm not making this up from myself you can read the Shikai agreement other than this he was paid money to rebuild the houses in Nagwan which were destroyed in operation Kalosha he never made those houses and kept the money with himself furthermore he was given a percentage in the development funds which were given previously only to the tribal leaders and malik so he's going to get that money also after this agreement and you will be wondering who was drafting these concessions to him wallahi not me not us the mma the provincial government of kpk Mutahida Majlis e Amal this was everything Naik Muhammad has ever wished for maybe more than that and now he had recognition from Pakistani government he had the funding from them he had the go ahead to lead the tribes his fighters swarmed from all directions Naik Muhammad became a local celebrity with one time having a hundred cars convoy wow this was the time naik mohammad double crossed everyone the americans voice of america was frequently taking naik mohammad's interviews and funneling him millions of dollars from cia naik mohammad did not hand over or repatriate any of the foreign fighter and kept taking safety money from them too even he had taken this money from pakistani government to be handed over to the foreigners so they leave back to their countries and naik mohammad said that he had to pay this money back pakistan government gave this money to him to be given back 
but nek mohammad did not give this money to instead he started getting rid of tribal elders and maliks of wazir tribe he was not just jealous of them but also wanted the fighters to come under his umbrella coming months nek mohammad assassinated many tribal elders and who was doing this dirty work for him was the foreigners tahir yuldosh and hasan mahsam both were in pakshia with saif ur rahman mansoor in operation anaconda they came into south waziristan on request of nek mohammad and they were the so called foreigners referred as al qaeda but both of them had nothing to do with al qaeda or any of the towering leaders both had like 3 to 400 fighters each they were the one who were providing nek mohammad the muscle arm against the local tribal lashkar this was local wazir area for centuries they had made tunnels underground storages for long now it was not easy for pakistan army to go in and take them down when the provincial government is also supporting them in the name of peace there was no such differentiation between local wazir kinsmen and nek mohammad followers the foreigners used to operate at night when i first came to wana we were on special missions by this time the portfolio of nek mohammad has risen and he was frequently giving interviews as a celebrity he was the favorite child of voice of america and they were channeling millions of dollars to him he has support of die hard foreigners whose existence was dependent on nek mohammad's life he had gathered local fighters from every assassinated tribal leader and malik pakistan army had peace deal with him and giving him all the funds which they used to give to the tribals to keep the area calm if there was one man ruling south waziristan at that time in 2004 even for a short time it was nek mohammad you can see what nek mohammad promised pakistan army in shikai agreement he fulfilled nothing let me tell you some of the clauses all funds of reconstruction and rehabilitation will be channeled through nek mohammad they will not participate in any terrorist activity their fighters will act as lashkars if pakistan army requires operation against any other terrorist no wazir will harbor any foreigner and nek mohammad will pay the money they gave to him to keep them in the area and make sure they leave if any of the wazir tribe is harboring a foreigner nek mohammad is going to take action against him no government facility or asset will be damaged and those who damage will be handed over to pakistan army nek mohammad will provide the security to the chinese and other government workers and contractors working on projects in south waziristan fund money will be paid to nek mohammad also for his services this dude was taking all concessions and not abiding to a single clause what was worse that nek mohammad infiltrated into zob balochistan and started encroaching on kakar's land as in those month nek mohammad was the only so called pakistani government representative so no one opposed him he went into branchkili and sambaza while making exit routes in afghanistan zob became the first exit for nek mohammad and al qaeda whenever they had a tip of that pakistan army would come and check the presence of foreigners they used to sneak into zob and in zob they used to go up into the mountains of toba kakar and hide there for few days while their cronies were roaming around in south waziristan these mountains in balochistan are very similar to those in tora bora zob has three mountain ranges interlocked with each other toba kakar on west sindgarh on south and kohe suleiman on the right the axis is very complicated with caves and tunnels shared between each other what nek mohammed did not know is that we knew about his exit routes and we were present in zob all the time however to our bad luck and to their good luck we had zero engagement orders but we knew soon nek mohammed will grow over his size and knowing his personality lose his balance we waited for that time soon nek mohammed went out of shikai deal he was a psycho person as i said if he is in a bad mood he will literally smash every agreement apart the time was now upon us after having passive american support nek mohammed went wild he used to listen to no one 
he was having high money which he could not spend like a normal rich person he started hating everyone money loses its value if you are living in a cave to irritate pakistan army he asked foreigners to move in broad daylight and create rampage and terror on anyone who refused to listen to their orders he asked for extortion from fellow wazis kakkars masood even shiranis in south and banuchis way up in the north we were watching him closely on the one side he started a parallel government influencing the afghan wazis and even blackmailing and pressurizing the same americans he were receiving the funds so i said to major soon the time will be up and we will be receiving the orders to take down this idiot few days later a pakistan army convoy was attacked by foreigners and hasan masan was killed and then we rounded up tahir yaldosh and his fighters in zob they left us with no choice they used to attack our convoys and our allies in south waziristan and run back to zob thinking they are undetected what they did not know was that we were sitting here all the time for them with kakar lashkars never having engagement orders but now we had those orders too you wanted to test our patience right this is what you get nek mohammed's time was short lived and many said we took him out many said it was his own clan haji sharif as he had become a big liability on them many also said that it was an american drone which killed him one thing is clear that it wasn't me nek mohammed messed up with everyone after nek mohammed that immediately the ahmed zai wazir struck a peace deal with pakistan army and molvi nazir to whom you might refer as a good taliban which he was not took over the wazir faction while some thugs and smugglers of masood declared their own faction under baitullah masood after abdullah masood was also taken down in zob baitullah named his group tehreek e taliban pakistan and he had nothing to do with either abdullah masood or nek mohammed or the new leader of wazir tribe molvi nazir